G'day, this is Charlie and a happy 2019. Wow, can't believe it's 2019 already. I am getting used to putting the 19 and not the 18 uh, behind my dates now. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about optimizing images for your WordPress website, specifically for your WordPress website. But a lot of the information I'm going to give you up front is generic information uh, for just about any website you run, or any website you run. Uh, not just about any website you run. And then I'm going to get into the specifics of how you can optimize images and what that means uh, for, you, for your WordPress website. So let's have a look at just the, this site that I've got here. This is just my scratch site. I'll just scroll to the top. Uh, and it's just a site I've put together so that I can do this video. Uh, you'll see that I have a blog post listed here or shown here. It's got this beautiful big image on it and a bit of information, etc., etc. It's the image that I want to talk about. This image, uh, I know that this image is 600 pixels wide because I, I uploaded it. But uh, images can be really quite large, physically large, and physically file size large files. Um, now, by physically large, I mean if you if you take an image out of your camera, or you go and buy a stock image, uh, depending on what type of stock image you buy, they can be something between 1,500 pixels wide to three and a half thousand pixels wide, sometimes even bigger um, and the the better our smart device cameras get the larger the physically larger these images get as well now physically large images are fantastic if you want to print them out and put them up on your wall and have them displayed as a poster or something uh, or you really need high resolution to do like photographic style and photographic quality images on a web screen um, it's not as important. It's certainly more important than it used to be, but it's not as important to have that level of uh, detail and that level of resolution. One reason being is that our screens just don't give us that level of resolution that, that a printer can give us. Um, they are getting closer. I will say that they are getting closer, but they just don't at the moment. Uh, and if we don't optimize our images by, by reducing the physical size of them, we're, we're keeping the, si the, the physical size of the image, the physical um, digital size of the image, large. And every time someone comes to load this web page, they're going to be loading that image down to their computer. And they have to download that image to their computer before it will display. So if you've got a really physically large file size for your, for your image, it's got to load first before the image will display. That's one reason why um, sites get pinged for slow response time and slow speed times uh, is because the, the images are too large and they just haven't been fixed up to load faster and load more um, efficiently. That's the word I'm looking for, load more efficiently. Uh, the other thing you're doing is if you're not reducing the actual dimensions of the image down to something smaller, um, that that too just keeps the size of the file up. Now, you might not think it's important, but if you've got an image that's three and a half thousand pixels wide, that's something, if I'm right, of, of about 18 centimeters um, wide, maybe, give or take. Uh, and, and that's a really big image, like physically large image. Your screen is not that wide, and the, the display uh, area on your screen is just not that wide. So you don't need to have something that big to display on the screen in front of you. So that's just something I want you to think about um, as you're going through looking at your images. Certainly get as large an image as you, as you can to start working with, but go through some of the techniques I'm going to give you here, uh, particularly for your WordPress website, to bring their, the physical size of the images down so that they load faster, they still look great, uh, but you're not getting hit by, first of all, Google's page speed, our page speed algorithm, uh, which you know, will will detriment you if, you've, if your site is too slow. You're not taking up space on your hosting provider, uh, or you're not taking up as much space on, the, on, your, on your hosting provider's platform, so you, know, you can get more up there. Um, and you're just giving your, your, your visitors a, a better experience of your site in general. 
So let's have a look at some of the things you can do. The first things that you should be doing is uh, looking at the physical size of an image and reducing it down to something uh, more usable. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the original image that I started uh, with this one and then I'm going to show you some of the steps that I went through um, just, just to start the process with this image before I even uh, decided that I was going to upload it to my website. There's a couple of things that I do before I, I, I even get to that point. So let's just have a look at this image. Um, I actually have um, it here uh, in my in my stock fold, photos folder. Uh, this is the original image here. This is actually uh, my modified image, but this one here is my original image. This is the one that I got uh, from the st a stock photo site. I, I purchased this image. Now um, I'm just going to bring up the property screen of it so that you can see it. And uh, the first thing you'll notice, that, that you should notice, is that the physical size of this image is 12.7 megabytes. That's massive. That is a really large file, physically large file. Every time someone loads, if I, if I was just to put this on my website and use it as it is, every time someone visits the page with that image on, that 12.7 megabytes would be downloaded to their computer. That's every time someone downloads that page, that's 12.7 megabytes of bandwidth, um, that has to be used uh, depending on your hosting service. You may be charged for that. Um, you may have it come out of your quota and it will stop displaying your site. Um, and, and at the very least, that's 12.7 megabytes of bandwidth that gets used up every time someone downloads it and they have to download that to their computer and wait for it to display. So that's one reason why you, know, you don't just use something straight from a stock photo site. So you've got to do a little bit of work around it. Um, I'm going to go to the details tab here on, on my uh, properties tab. Uh, apart from all of the information on it, what we're going to notice here is that uh, the dimensions are 4,288 pixels uh, wide by 2,848 pixels um, deep. So it's, that's very large. Uh, and it's a 300 dot per inch uh, resolution, 300 dpi resolution, which is um, high, high quality. It's not as high as you can get these days, but it's still fairly high quality. Uh, and you probably don't need that level of dpi to display on your website. Now, you might want it if you've got a photography site or you want to maintain the integrity of the images, but really think hard about whether you want to maintain 300 dpi. I will go through a few things, however, uh, and how you can bring that down. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you, is just how big the, the, the raw images that we work with can be. Uh, the second thing that you need is, uh, uh, let me just flick back to uh, my, my website here. There we go, so that um, you know, I'm, not, I'm not distracting you. Um, the first thing that you're going to need is something to edit the image with. Now there's some tools that you can use on your Windows desktop um, or your Macintosh desktop, depends on what you want to use. What I am going to show you today is a tool called um, Canva or the Canva Photo Editor. And I have that window open here. There we go. I have that window open. Um, and this is canva.com slash photo hyphen editor. Uh, and I've only, I've only used it a couple of times. Uh, but it's it's this part of Canva is free at the very least, and you might want to investigate Canva in general and and have a look at it. Or Canva, sorry. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to open the large image that I've got in the photo editor, and we're going to resize it down to something that's uh, slightly more usable. So uh, I'm going to bring up my screen here, and I'm going to drag my image to my Canva desktop and I'm just going to drop it in there. It'll take a couple of minutes or seconds, not minutes, to uh, upload. It is a large image so it does take a little bit to get it up to um, the website but you'll see that it's displayed now and you've got a few things you can do. You can do some filtering, you can do some adjusting, you can crop out things. The thing that I'm, the only thing that I'm really going to touch here is how to resize the image. And I'm going to click on the resize button here and you'll see that it's telling me that three, it's 3,000 by 1992. 
It doesn't need to be that wide. Um, you, you may need to play around a little to work out the best width. Most blog posts um, and most articles on WordPress websites, 600 wide is more than enough. Uh, but if you've got a full width screen, you might want to make it something like 1500 or 200 wide, just to make sure that uh, it really caters to the really, really wide screens. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to reduce this down to 600 pixels wide. Uh, sorry, before I do that, this lock aspect ratio, that's really, really important. Make sure that that's checked. Uh, because when you reduce one one measurement, it will reduce the other one accordingly. So I'm just going to make this 600 pixels wide. Uh, you'll see it, it's actually showed you how much smaller it's going to be, which is considerably smaller. Uh, it is zoomed, so you don't worry about the fact that it looks much, much smaller than it could should be. Uh, and it's automatically adjusted the height to 398. I'm going to click Apply. I now have uh, a resized image. Um, and, and that image is now 600 pixels wide by 398 pixels. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to download our image uh, by clicking the download button. Uh, it's going to advertise Canva to you. Uh, you can ignore that for now because uh, we're really just resizing the image. I'm going to save this in my stock photos folder. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder called Resized Images, just so I know where to find this. Go in and Abstract Background Resize. I'm going to call, that, call it that. It's going to save it as a PNG image. Okay, that's downloaded now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go back to my Stock Photos folder. I'm going to find that new folder that we just created. There it is there, and I'm going to bring up the properties on it. And you'll see that we've gone from a 27 megabyte file down to a 424 kilobyte file. Much, much smaller, much, much better. And if I go to details, uh, you'll see that it's now 600 pixels by 398 rather than that really large file that we had. So that's the first thing that um, you need to do when, when, you, when you're working with your images is make sure that you physically resize them down before you upload them. Uh, it's always a good practice to get into uh, and you can spend a little bit of time and tidy them up. You can crop them, uh, maybe brighten them up a little, maybe dull them down a little, whatever works. But just spend a little bit of time and just clean them up a bit and make sure that you bring the physical file size down. That's the first thing that we're going to do. Now I'm going to go back to our website. There's a little bit more we can do uh, before we go before um, you, you just put your images out there in the open. Uh, this next part is specifically for WordPress websites, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a plugin that I use that makes uh, the optimization of my images that much better. Again. So I'm going to go to my uh, WP Admin dashboard. I'm already logged in here. You guys will have to log in. Uh, what you're going to do for one time only, you're going to install a new plugin. So in the menu on the left hand side, go to plugins uh, and go to add new. And then in the keyword search, uh, put in SMUSH. I call it smoosh. Some people probably call it smush. Um, for some reason, I call it smoosh. Smoosh Image Compression and Optimization. Uh, I use the one by WPMU Dev. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, and there, this is the free version. There is a uh, professional version uh, of it. And um, I, I actually use the professional version on my websites. But I am just going to show you uh, the free version for now. Click on Install Now. And then once that's installed, make sure you click Activate, and that's going to activate it. Okay, so uh, once it's activated, it goes back to the Plugins menu, and you'll see you've got a pop-up here that says Get Optimized, Resize. You can dismiss it, but go into the Smoosh or Smush uh, menu item here on the left-hand side. Okay, so uh, again, one time only you need to do this. Uh, you, it, it brings up a quick setup menu. 
Uh, you can skip it. I wouldn't. It's worthwhile going through it, and then just if you want to go back through and, and double check your settings, you can do. So uh, it's giving you your introduction. Uh, what it's asking you to do is every time you upload your images, do we want to smush your images on upload? I always say yes. That's the first thing I do. After I've resized my images, um, I want it to go through the image processor th um, that this that this plugin installs and let it optimize my images even further. Uh, strip images uh, metadata from your camera. Uh, so I'm just going to show you there we go artificial intelligence the, we want the original file I'm going to bring up the properties for that and if I go to the details tab you'll see at the bottom here it tells me what camera it took um, took the image all the details for the camera and the lens and the aperture and all the settings that were done uh, this is called the metadata and it takes up space in the file when the file uploads because it's got to be stored somewhere it's data it's got to be stored somewhere so it's stored in the file uh, when you are setting up uh, your 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 smoosh plugin, uh, you can actually ask it to strip the image metadata out. I most certainly would, um, because it's it's generally not needed unless you're doing something photography related or something that you need that metadata for. Strip it out. The other thing that um, it will allow you to do is resize all of your full size images. Um, so what it says here is detect unnecessarily large oversized images on your pages to reduce their size and decrease their load times. In image resizing happens automatically when you upload attachments. To support retina devices we recommend using two times the dimension of your image size. Uh, animated GIFs won't be resized. Um, I'd actually recommend you do this uh, and uh, turn that on now when you do it automatically it asks you what the maximum size image uh, that you want that, that, that you want to be able to upload to your site I would leave it at 2048 um, I have had sites that I've reduced that down but that's because of the this layout and the settings that we've used uh, in this case leave it at 2048 but what that will do is if you do forget to um, run it through the resizer before um, you upload it to your site, the, the plugin will grab it for you. I still recommend doing a manual pre process before you even use this process. Okay, once you've got all that set up, click on Get Started. Okay, um, so there's a couple of things here. Um, it's telling us how many, how much savings we've made with the plugin. We haven't used anything at them. We haven't used it yet, so there's no savings to be made. Um, <clears throat> we can smoosh individual images via our media library, uh, or we can do a bulk smoosh now or a bulk smush now. And what that will do is that will actually take everything that's in our images. There's only four images in my image library. Um, and it will bolt smoosh them down and I don't have to do anything. So if you, you can apply this to a site that you've already got a ton of images uploaded uh, and it will apply these settings for you automatically. So let's go and do that first. Uh, I'm going to click on click the bolt smoosh and uh, because I've only got four images it's gone through really quickly but you might need to go and get yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a drink while, while it's being done. Uh, now this is the free version of the plugin so it is trying to upgrade you to the pro version. I really do recommend um, you look at the pro version. I run it and I, I think it's wonderful. Uh, so these are the settings that we've set up uh, just as we went through uh, the, the setup process just now uh, and that's basically it that that that's the most basic way you can use the the smoosh plugin to do what you need it to do now I'm going to go and look at our media library uh, and you'll see here that um, I've got my artificial intelligence I've got three versions of this because I have uploaded it several times um, and you'll see that uh, it, it's telling us here on the right hand side how many copies of the image were reduced and by how much so how much you've saved on the image um, just by putting it through the smoosh plugin um, 
th this can get really, really impressive when you've got really big uh, images that, you, that you're doing. Remembering that I've already um, optimized out these images before I've uploaded them as well. Um, and that's it. That, 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 that's as hard as it gets to use the Smoosh plugin. Uh, I do recommend looking at the um, Pro version. I will put the, the link for the Pro version uh, in the in the description of this video so you can have a look at it. Um, and as always, if you've got any questions at all, please ask me. Um, I, I love to answer the questions. I like, I like to see what sorts of things come out of the, the things that I'm showing you. Have a great day, guys. Bye.